Markets were a bit disappointed because they thought that they uh, this this reference to cumulative tightening, having to watch cumulative tightening meant the Fed was going to get more dovish. But instead, Jay Powell made it clear that any thought of pausing rate hikes is premature. They've got high inflation and red hot labor markets. Is the Fed on the right track now? I certainly think it is. I think the markets tend to be looking for any excuse to believe that the Fed is going to uh, stop raising rates or pivot in some sense, and it's just not ready to yet. The economy is still pretty strong. Uh, as as, as uh, Jay made it clear today, and um, inflation has not begun to fall. And so I think people were reading in to the statement, at least some of the financial markets seem to be reading into the statement, what they wanted to see as opposed to what the Fed was saying. And Jay clarified that quite clearly. So how, what do you think restrict, restrictive will end up being? He was, one of the questions he was asked was if the Fed, if he thinks that they have to get the funds rate above their inflation rate, their key inflation gauge, uh, in order to say it's truly restrictive policy, restrictive enough to bring down inflation. How is that going to work out in 2023? Well, well I think that they, as Jay said, they have a ways to go. If you look across at least the treasury yield curve, for almost any duration you pick, inflation is higher than the yields. So we have negative interest rates still, and that is in no way one would consider a restrictive policy. So I think that, um, personally, I think we are likely to see rates somewhere between 5 and 6% before before this is over and maybe even higher. It depends on what inflation does over the coming months and quarters, how high they have to go. But they know they can't, um, they can't just stop it, it, because it won't work. It's historical experience teaches us that. So um, they don't have much choice if they really want to commit to lowering inflation. There's so much pressure for him to pause or at least, you know, give that indication of pausing. And I think that's what really was was so groundbreaking in, in a way from the remarks that we heard overnight. But how do you deal with the labour market? Has just the I I incredible magnitude of that strength of the labour market surprised you? Well, uh, yes and no. I think it's remained strong. It's not surprising given... Um, given both the effects of the pandemic and uh, the stimulus to aggregate demand that the Fed and fiscal policy is, has uh, provided to the economy. So the labor market remains very strong, uh, really no signs of slowing down. There may be some slowdown yet to come, but it certainly hasn't arrived as of yet. And I think the Fed realizes that, but it also realizes the reality that that slowdown may come, and that's when their task is really going to be difficult. It's when that slowdown comes, we'll find out whether the Fed is as committed to restoring price stability as its language for the last two months has indicated. And there'll be a lot of... There's also the acknowledgement... Yeah, yes, we've talked about, yeah, just how immense the politi political pressure really is becoming, especially pertaining to potential job losses. But the, he's acknowledged that the path to a soft landing is getting narrower, right? Is there a way to get out of this without a recession? You know, I don't think anybody knows the answer to that. It certainly could happen. I think what Jay was saying, correctly so, is that given the way inflation has been going and its lack of... of um, decline or, or falling um, is making that path uh, a lot less likely. And I think he was indicating that today, unless they begin to see inflation uh, breaking in a downward direction, um, they're going to have to continue to apply uh, restraint. Um, they've got to get to restraint, first of all, but then to apply res restraint until it does. And so 
I think Jay aptly described it as the, the window, so to speak, or the dry path for um, a, uh, a recovery without uh, serious slowing and perhaps increased unemployment rate. That window is really beginning to narrow. So do you get any sense that there may be just a little bit of uh, two camps developing within the Fed, uh, the camp that insisted about the, the comments about uh, cumulative tightening, the Fed pay more attention to cumulative tightening, which markets thought meant, oh, they're going to be less aggressive because they've done so much versus those who are saying, we just have to keep raising rates until we see actually inflation falling, even if we see this economy slowing down and the job market getting weaker? Well, I, I think the language of cumul cumulative uh, was misinterpreted. It's always about cumulative. It's always about how high do rates have to go to provide the restraint that's needed to bring inflation down. I think Jay was very clear on that today. Uh, and so the question is not how fast. And the reason it's been fast is because the Fed waited way too long to start this process. Now they still have to get rates up to a level that applies the restraint. And he was very clear that that's necessary. And he alluded to the fact that that means that rates have to get above, well above the rate of inflation. Um, and that the Fed will keep raising rates until they get there. Now, there's uncertainty about, of course, where that number is, and that will be shaped over time as they continue to raise rates and how then inflation and the economy respond. But I don't think there's any question that rates have to go up. I think they have to go up a fair amount yet. But um, I think there was really, in my view, there was really no new information in the statement. Uh, and uh, it's pretty consistent with the way the Fed views this. Uh, and that's, that's, my, that's my interpretation.